stay friends. I, um... I had a great day. Really great day. I have been... I've been learning. You know, I've done my last several posts on on, on fear generally, but, you know, in some instances quite, instances, quite specifically, dealing with fear that I have around some injuries I've sustained recently. I feel like I recap this on every post, so I'll spare you. You're lucky. If you haven't seen my last 15 posts, you don't know how lucky you are that I'm not recapping everything again. <laughs> be that as it may, I am learning yet again, it would appear, because I feel like I've probably had this insight before, but I'm learning yet again that f fear... How do I want to say this? Whenever I come through fear, whenever I whenever I traverse a fear chasm, it's like you traverse the fear chasm and you look back. And it's like, oh, that wasn't nearly as formidable of a chasm as I thought it was. And not only that, hey, look around. I'm actually in a place that's more exciting than before I leapt over the fear chasm or walked the rickety bridge or whatever way you get across your fear chasms. Every single time, without fail, I end up in a better place. And, you know, it's telling, it, it's really kind of, it's kind of important to keep ingesting the insight that that's how it works because each new wave of fear you know i've had these it's, it's been it's been it's been intense lately and at the same time i've been getting i feel like i'm also reaping a lot of rewards very quickly in the sense that I learn, you know, what, what happens? Why, why do we get fearful? We get fearful because we are, we're afraid that we're going to lose something that we really want. That we're not going to get something that we really want. We're going to lose something that we're dearly attached to, right? Those are, the, those are the two big ones. And virtually, virtually every time, the real lesson of the fear chasm is that maybe either I'm not actually going to lose the thing that I thought I was so attached to or that I thought I needed to that, you know, that I thought I couldn't do without. Or, hey, I might lose that thing. But you know what? It wasn't till I let go of it it wasn't until I had it take, stripped away from me and I let go of it that I even realized what I really want, which I desire much more deeply than the thing I was clinging to. And as long as I was clinging to it, I was never going to see the thing that I more deeply am drawn to because I was too busy being attached to this thing that I'm clinging to. 
Now that is like literally life. That's like literally spiritual progress in a nutshell. We're clinging to some level of consciousness, some something that, or, or some identity that that is rooted in a level of consciousness. And then it's like, hell no, no, don't take that God. I lost it. What's going to happen? Ah, oh, baby, it's all just black death. Wait. What if I don't accept that it's black death? What if there's a light in this black death? What if this black death can't touch the essence of who I am? Oh. Huh. I feel lighter. I miss that thing. You know what? That thing was heavy. That 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 took That took a lot of my energy holding on to that thing. This is a what a relief. And then we go on with our life. And life expands. And I tell you, that is my experience. Every single time. As I said the other day, that doesn't stop me from being plunged right back into the fear dimension especially if I'm not, if I kind of haven't let go yet all, all the way, if, I, if I'm still like, if I'm like, really like, no, I really need to let go. Oh God, I, I, I know I really need to. I should really let go. I'd be so much happier. I, I, I know that this is not as important as this other thing that I really am starting to recognize, but I'm still attached to it, right? There's a negotiation that's happening. And I hope I'm enacting it in a way that you can see this spiritual dialectic at work my pantomime of this conundrum but but that's literally what it feels like i, I until i'm ready to let go until until and it's usually when the fear gets blackest and darkest when the dark blackness gets blackest and darkest is when you really let go and <clears throat> and you know i um I sort of feel like this relieved sense of no longer being able to cling to the things that don't serve me, to the things I don't really want. No longer being able to cling to the things that I don't really want. That is a deep gift from the universe. Even if it feels like being flattened by the universe, being beat up by the universe. You know, and this is something that it's like with all of my study of philosophy and reading spiritual literature and a fair, a fair amount, I'd say, of, of practice and even being in the presence of some really great spiritual teachers. All of 
all of them. Uh, to, I mean, to a, to, a, to a person. The message is, we have to let go in order to fall into or be, be drawn into, stumble into our true self, a deeper layer of our true self. And oftentimes, you know, we got a lot of layers to go through. Oftentimes we don't just fall into the deepest possible cosmic layer of realization and enlightenment. We got to go, we got to go through the layers. You know, I heard a wonderful story today. I'm reading The Gift by Lewis Hyde, which, oh my God, it's just, it's the book, I think I mentioned this on a post a few days ago. It's the, it's the book that, one of the very first books that my wife and I bonded over when we were still just friends and sp spiritual theater nerds <laughs> in our, you know, in our graduate school, um, she recommended this book to me, and it was like it's a perfect, perfect book for me at the time, and gave us hours of fruitful conversation. He talks about the Buddha, Gaut Gautama the Buddha, who. lived all these lifetimes, innumerable lifetimes on his way to becoming the Buddha. And one of his lifetimes was as a rabbit. And when he was this rabbit, he decided one day that he was going to if, that if anyone came along who needed to, who needed food, I guess maybe it was a season of scarce food availability. If anyone came along who needed food, he was going to offer up his body to be eaten. And some divine deity looking on from the heavens senses this spiritual, this bright burning light of spiritual intensity that's emanating from around this rabbit. So the deity takes a form and goes down to earth and approaches the rabbit disguised as a Brahmin and says, rabbit, I have a problem. You know, I'm on a fast and my fast means that I'm not allowed to take the life of any living creature, plant or animal, but I need food. I can I can't do I, I if I only could find some food I would be able to perform my duties as a monk. And the rabbit says, "Well, you came to the right place. I just made a resolution to sacrifice myself to give myself in to let my let my body be eaten by anyone who needed it. So make a fire, Brahmin, and I'll and and I will hop, I'll jump into the fire and then you can just let me cook in the fire and then when I'm when I'm done being cooked, then you can eat my body. You know, a, a, a fitting level of conscious awareness for a rabbit destined to become the Buddha. So the, the deity makes the fire and then he tells the rabbit that he's ready and then the rabbit jumps into the fire and then the fire doesn't burn him. The fire doesn't burn the rabbit because it's like a fake fire. It's a magic hologram fire that the deity made. And then the rabbit says, Brahman, your fire is cold. What's going on? This is weird. I've never been in a cold fire before. I've never seen what's what's the deal. And the Brahman says, well, I am not actually a Brahman. I am this deity. And I came here to test you to see whether you would make good on your resolution to sacrifice yourself, to, to, to give yourself up. And the rabbit says, well, bring it on. You can test me all day. You will never find any limit to my generosity. And then the Brahmin and the, or the deity, duly impressed, 
blesses the rabbit. I think the rabbit lives. And that's the end of the story. It's the Buddha's. It's one of the thousands of lifetimes that led up to the Buddha's enlightenment. And that is a perfect encapsulation of what fear kind of feels like once we've been through it. We're like, that felt like a, I thought I, thought I was jumping into a fire, but then the fire ended up just being cold. It ended up not really burning that much. It may, might have kind of hurt a little bit, but come to think of it, I probably was, I was just like, my mind, I thought it was going to be hot, so it felt hot, but I didn't really think about it. The only thing it burned away was extraneous stuff that I didn't really need as part of, that was, I was, I was trying, to, trying to get rid of that anyway. I'm trying to burn that off. Thanks, fire. That's spiritual evolution, in essence. We're an amazing, amazing, amazing universe. What an amazing universe. That that's how it works. Doesn't that kind of mean you can't possibly make a misstep? Because it's all about accepting and letting go. Isn't that kind of miraculous? I think so. That's where I am today, folks. Much love. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. See you very soon.